So you want to be able to modify an image based on areas of lightness or areas of saturation or areas based on hue. You, my friend, need the Color Zones module. If you haven't looked at it yet, stick around. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 48 of Understanding Darktable. The Color Zones module is quite a powerful tool, and I will confess it's not one that I use a whole lot, but it does have its, its strong points. So let's dive on in. This is an image I shot with Tegan on our last beach shoot. This was just before I went away to Sri Lanka. Uh, as you can see, I've done a few things to this image already. Uh, this was where it started. Obviously, I've cleaned it up, added a bit of contrast, done a few bits and pieces. So the Color Zones module is essentially broken up into three tabs, lightness, saturation, and hue. And you can work on areas of the image based on any one of those three input parameters. And if you remember back to the equalizer module, you will realize that this interface looks somewhat familiar. We've got these little triangles down the bottom which allow us to change the position of these nodes along the center of the graph. So we can move them you know, left or right to target different areas of the color spectrum. That's when we're in the hue tab. If we're in the saturation tab, it's still the same thing. You've got your hue range from left to right and your saturation is full saturation at the top and full desaturation at the bottom. With the lightness tab, much the same story. We've still got our color range spread from left to right across the width of the graph, but we can control the amount of luminosity for any part of the color spectrum by moving these nodes up to make them lighter or down to make them darker. So let's dive into this and see how it works in practice. You'll also notice that just below the mix control, there is this select by drop down menu, which defaults to hue. So the default way of working with this module is that you are going to be selecting based on hue, but you can choose saturation or lightness as your input if you want to. I'm just going to leave it on hue for now. Now, you might look at this image and go, well, other than the bit of blue water up there, which kind of breaks the composition a little bit, is there really anything else wrong with this image? Well, for me, it's this sort of magenta cast on her skin in the shadow areas. Everywhere where there's light, it's, it's fine, but just this inside of her bicep here and her wrist and her hand are quite magenta and that bothers me. So I'm going to use the Color Zones module to try and fix that. And I'm actually going to do it in two passes because this is my second crack at this and I found that trying to do it all in one hit didn't quite work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by doing a drawn mask. That way I can limit the module to only these pixels here where the issue is evident. So I'm just going to use the brush tool and I'll just make this a little bit bigger and I'm just going to draw a short path like that. So now if we turn on our mask view we can see that those are the pixels that the module will be active within and the whole of the rest of the image will be ignored. So we can turn that off. Now what is it we want to do? Well we want to target those pixels that are magenta in color and we want to maybe desaturate them a little and we also want to change the hue. So I'm going to start on the saturation tab and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eyedropper and I'm going to click in this area and what that does is put this black vertical line on the graph to say this is the part of the color spectrum you've identified as the problem area that you you want to work on. So now it's a case of moving one of these triangles onto that black line so that 
when we adjust the node, we are actually targeting the pixels that we want to target. So simply left click, bring that over to where the black line is. And now I want to desaturate these pixels. So all I'm going to do is bring this node down a bit. And immediately we can see that that magenta cast has been reduced. Maybe I've gone a little bit too far there. It's maybe looking a little bit grayish. So I might just back it off a smidge. But we've targeted the magenta. And because of where this next node is, we've also picked up a little bit of the oranges and yellows, which are just a bit to the right in terms of this color swatch. And that's okay because all of that skin tone does sort of fall within that range. Okay, does it look too desaturated? Let's just zoom in there. Yeah, well, maybe not. I'm still seeing a little bit of magenta there. Let's just pull that out a little bit more. So now what I want to do is see whether or not I can push that magenta in terms of its hue a little bit more towards skin tone, which would be a little bit more yellow. So to do that, I jump over to the Hue tab. Our color picker is still active and it's still in the same location. So the black line is still showing us that this is the area you want to work on. Again, we're gonna move our little control point over to where the black line is. And we can see that the yellows are a little bit higher up this graph than where we're currently based. So we're just going to click that and push it towards yellow. And that has started to bring those skin tones more into line with what we're seeing on her arm that's closest to the camera. So if we just toggle the whole module off, you can see all that magenta's come back. I'm just going to turn that eyedropper off so that box disappears. So module on, module off. So as you can see, that's done a great job of just targeting that magenta cast on her skin. Just switch that back on. So now I want to tackle the same problem here on her hand and her wrist. And for that, I'm going to use a second instance. So I'll go new instance and it's color zones one. I could rename that if I wanted to just to say wrist hand, wrist, whatever. So now color zones, hand, wrist. So that just tells me that that's what this particular instance of the module is doing. Okay, so I'm going to start by once again drawing a mask. And we're just going to paint over her hand and her wrist. And again, we can just check the area that we've selected with our mask view. Beautiful, that's what we want. And now our color picker will allow us to identify that part of the image that we want to work on. I'm just going to turn that off and I'm gonna zoom in a bit and just gonna select some of this really intense magenta area there and zoom out and again we'll try a little bit of desaturation to begin with you can see that we're right down at the left hand end of the hue graph or the color spectrum so it's basically this node right on the end that we're wanting to desaturate so we'll just desaturate that a little we don't want to go too far because if we go too far we're basically going to look like a zombie at the end. It'll just make all of the skin gray and we don't want to do that. So we'll bring this up and we will then have a go at shifting the hue as well. So we want to drive this more towards yellow to make the skin look a little bit more skin like. So we'll just pump this up into the yellow part of the spectrum Maybe now I could bring some of that saturation back. Is that looking better? Let's just toggle the module off. Back on. Mm, it's a mild improvement. Not sure that it's uh, really perfect, but 
if I saturated that even more, okay, and let me have a look at the hue. Okay, now back that saturation off a bit. Is that looking better? Let's toggle off. So there it's quite magenta-ish and toggle back on. Yeah, I think that's, that's better than it was. There's obviously some retouching could be done in here to uh, smooth out skin tones and cover up on blemishes and things like that. But in terms of color, I feel like that's an improvement over where we started. It's sort of got rid of that really intense magenta look. Now, when I sat down to start on recording this video, I did think I would be able to use the Color Zones module to get rid of that little splash of blue water up there in the top right hand corner. Sadly, I have not had much luck with that, so I'm not going to attempt it again. You might have better luck with it than I did, but uh, I didn't have much luck in trying to shift that blue to be more towards the sand in colour. I think if I really wanted to do something about that water, I would probably just go to the retouch module and I would sample some of the sand and just paint it over that area and that would get rid of that blue splash in the in the corner, which to my mind just sort of ruins the composition a little bit. Okay, just before I sign off, the select by dropdown, as I mentioned at the start, it defaults to hue. You do have the option to select by saturation or to select by lightness. I haven't had a play around with that, but it should be fairly self-explanatory. It changes the way these graphs are laid out because you are now choosing by a different parameter, uh, but it's still the same principle. But the thing I did want to mention is whatever you choose as the select by option, that is the input for all three tabs. You can't choose a different input for each of the tabs. So whatever you choose there, it will apply to the lightness tab, the saturation tab, and the hue tab. Just be aware of that. If and when I get a chance to play around with those other options, I might do a separate video on them. Okay, that is going to do it for this one for this moment in time. A uh, couple of things to mention. I'm kicking around some ideas for some other videos. Not promising anything just yet, but it's a work in progress. Uh, I have now got 2.7 running on a separate user account on this machine, uh, just to keep it completely separated from my production version of 2.6.2. Uh, so that's allow allowing me to get my head around some of the new features that are coming in 3.0. And the intention is that when the new version drops at Christmas time, I'll have two or three videos ready to go to basically get you up and running with the new features straight away. That's the plan. All right, whilst I'm talking about this stuff, I will just briefly mention once again, if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing, please head on over to patreon.com slash understanding dark table. The link will be down below. Uh, and if you want to support me with a few bucks a month, that would be most greatly appreciated. All right, until I speak with you again, take care.